Hi y'all, welcome to Phoebe on Blast. I think I've mistimed this episode even more than I mistimed the previous episode because it's actually Wednesday, the eviction is tonight and I'm doing the episode before the eviction but it's got the whole week, the only thing I don't know is the outcome. I've not looked on Twitter so I don't know who's likely to go, hopefully Scott, although it could be Neely because America's gone schizo. So... <laughs> From the main episode last week, um, we saw Shane go, <laughs> rip, um, <laughs> Scott um, proclaimed himself a mental giant, <laughs> one of those words is true, um, oh, the whole dog murder files, I didn't know why America, oh god, here we go with the America, had put up Danielle last week, and it was because she murdered her dog. She left it outside, didn't feed it, didn't take it to the vet. So, yeah, I, f- I fully understand now. Probably next week I'll find out that Neely's like, I don't know what, kidnapped a baby or something, and that's why you put her up this week, because I still don't really know. Well, I have a bit more of an idea. I was going to do this podcast yesterday, and then I realised I had no fucking clue what was going on. So I actually did look on Twitter and do a bit of research and found out what was going on. Otherwise, it would have just been me going, ooh... Which, uh, to be honest, you get a bit of anyway. So, oh yeah, that was after Justin won that veto last time. Um, Oh, Danielle's eviction dress, she didn't get evicted, but it was very nice. It was like a lilac number. Oh, Shane did a a bitchy speech. (laughs) Also, it was a spoiler, because he said, you're backdooring me. Stop doing that. Um, He said, I will not hug you when I leave. Bad strategy, because you're already setting yourself up to leave. Oh, God. And can America please send in a care package some fucking deodorant for these sweaty buggers? Shane's armpits absolutely disgusting. I thought, well, fair enough. He's on the block. He's under the cosh. Then you see Danielle. She's got sweaty armpits, too. How about if you're feeling that sweaty, don't wear something with long sleeves? Has Big Brother removed all the deodorant from the house? Maybe they've run out. I don't know. It's weird, though, um, and quite disgusting. Um, Shane said, you messed with the wrong people, which was a bit like when Rick in The Walking Dead said, you just messed with the wrong group, which it turned out he'd messed with the wrong group a couple of series later, but I digress. Um, Neely's wig, eek, I've put, I can't even remember that. Um, oh, so Shane and Daniel got four votes each, and Scott got to break the tie. Have you ever seen a man so happy in all your life? It was almost like you just had sex for the first time. Um, and then went to the memory wall and saw Scott go black and white. Have you noticed what the memory wall looks like this year? It looks gross. It looks like Big Brother, like teenager or something. It's like it's Polaroids or something. I don't know. It's got no gravitas whatsoever. But mind you, that safety ceremony crap is like... Ugh. yeah it's like it should just be called budget big brother why don't they just rename it that and then you know exactly what you're getting and everyone's happy so shang was gone fuck you all the sweat mance was over no more fingering on the trampolines i'm quite pleased about that myself although i didn't really see that much of it but it was more than enough um oh and then just before they played the head of household uh, Christy, what's her name, Chrissy, <laughs> oh, um, had an argument with Scott, and she was having a go at Scott, going, oh, you shouldn't have backdoored Shane, he didn't even have a chance to fight, um, and then Scott was being his usual cunt self, and and then um, it turned out that Chrissy won the HOH, so that's a bad time to have an argument in between the person leaving and the HOH competition, like, that's quite a short window of time, so... It should be quite easy not to argue with someone in that five or ten minutes before those two things happen. Ding dong! Ah, it's your boy, Paul, at the door with Pablo. Ah, bring on the shouting. Friendship. Never cared. Whatever. Um, whoa! (laughs) Um, yeah, it was nice to see Paul, wasn't it, with a haircut? Um, I like Paul. I heard on Big Brother Gossip, that's where I did my research, that, (laughs) that, um... Paul didn't know anyone's name, which is fair enough. I mean, I'm doing a podcast about the fucking programme. I don't know anyone's name either. Um, 
So the HOH competition, I've just written balls. I think they like three and loads of balls and something. I don't have, that's literally the only thing I've written. HOH competition balls. There's something with balls, wasn't there? Was there something inside the balls? Like when Dan Giesing had to grab those balls and go, run to that machine, he like battered someone in the head. It was like that, but not as good. They don't show enough of the competitions. It's like with the veto, I, I, it's like the wall of shame. It's like, what actually happened? They need more airtime for the competitions. I know the highlight show is short, but at least spend five minutes. Can't they just make it a little bit longer and spend five minutes on the HOH? God, on the fucking normal Big Brother, they spend like 15 minutes on the HOH comp with all the explaining of the rules in between. Now we're expected to understand the rules, which, funnily enough, we actually can't understand the rules without someone uh, talking us through it in the diary room, it turns out. We were like, oh, this is so patronising. And now we're suddenly like, oh, what? I need like someone shouting at me in the diary room to explain the rules to me. Um, so it's just like, can you just give us a bit more either explanation of the rules or, well, both actually, more show more of the competition. Like with that barcode one, I thought it was just me, didn't understand what was going on. I listened to about three other podcasts since then and no one understood what the fuck was going on. Come on, big brother, sort it out. Um, so yeah, Chrissy won the HOH, don't know how. Um, Scott was not too happy. Jamboree were all celebrating. Alex and Scott were commiserating. Um, Chrissy said she wants to play an honest game. Oh, whatever. Um, Scott's strategy, he went up to the HOH room, he said to Chrissy, you can either backdoor me, you can let America pick me as uh, the nominee. Pick me, pick me. Or you can take me to the end because I'm unlikable. They were all criticising him for that, but I actually thought that was quite a good pitch. Um, those are all quite valid points. Um, and then Neely was going to him, oh, you need to spill the tea on your reliance. Shut up. Um, I hate that expression, spill the tea. I hate a lot of these modern day expressions. <laughs> it's not like a right old person. <laughs> Ugh, anyway. Um... Oh, God, Shane's eviction interview. Shane, I'd forgotten about you already. Uh, I think he'd put some deodorant on by this point, so that's good. Oh, my God, hold on. We have to talk about Julie Chen's outfit when she was interviewing Shane. She had ripped jeans on, knee-high boots with the ripped jeans. Think about that. And two-tone eyeshadow. Now, Julie, it's not Halloween yet, but I admire your bravery. It's almost like Emma Willis levels of bravery. Um, Shane, the only notable thing Shane said in that interview, or indeed in his whole entire life, was, I've been with beautiful women, but women's insides were never what I wanted. That's because you're gay, Shane. Um, <laughs> I had to laugh at my own jokes, there's no one else to laugh at them anymore. So, Chrissy, HOH, yes, ball smashers immediately started throwing Scott under the bus. Ha ha. Um, Alex told Chrissy that Scott had been after her since day one. <laughs> Alex was offering loads of different types of deals. And Chrissy did really want to put Alex up, but there was a spanner thrown in, into that into those works. Oh, Chrissy said, because of America, we all need to mind our P's and Q's. Ugh, fuck off, Chris. I hate Chrissy now. Oh, God. She's absolutely unbearable. HHI is times like a billion. And it's not just that. It's just her general attitude is disgusting. Um, and then... Um, I've written Mario and Luigi music as Morgan campaigns to Chrissy. Oh, yeah, there was some, like, Italian mafioso-style music playing. That was a bit odd. Uh, Chrissy's yellow blonde hair I've put on the eat list. She needs some purple shampoo. I've actually got some left over from when I was a blonde if uh, she wants some. What's next? Oh, yeah. They were all going up to Chrissy. She was acting like the godfather. You know, she was, like, having, like, appointments with them all where they all got to plead their case. I've not seen much of that this year, actually. Um, She's like, oh, I'm keeping my options open, blah, 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 whatever. Um, Oh, so America's care package. Alex was given safety. She got the safety servant outfit or whatever, like, sexy French maid or whatever. Um... So the caveat was she was safe for the week, but she had to be Chrissy's personal servant. But it wasn't like Chrissy could just go up to her and go, oh, uh, rub my feet or whatever. Like, some weird, creepy English butler-type voice came over the tannoy and was saying, 
I can't remember how the voice goes. I can't. It's an English accent, and I can't even do an impression of it. That's good. But saying to Alex, go and oh, go and give Christy a compliment or whatever. It's like oh, whatever. Um, sorry, I'm overdoing the whatevers. It's better than literally. Um, so then there was Chembot's Q and A. Uh, she said, "Don't call me Boo or Babes." <laughs> um, she said she'll answer to anything else though. So just call her sweetheart or something. Um, Oh, and Julie revealed that America chooses the winner from the final three. So it's not the final two this year like it normally is. So that's quite an interesting twist on it. So you need to basically take really, really unlikable people to the final three. So then Chrissy, or Pissy as she should be renamed, (laughs) was debating um, who to put up instead of Alex with Needy and Jason. And then she just turned around and she's like, it looks like you two are trying to run my game. And both of them like looked at her like, what? Um, you could tell they were both really offended by that. Chrissy's an idiot. Um, and then uh, Morgan and Whitney were trying to make a deal with Chrissy to keep them off the block. I've actually seen a bit of gameplay out of Whitney lately, which is quite shocking. What? No. Um, so the have-nots were revealed. Uh, wait for it. It was Scott. Yes. Neely. And Jason. The J-Roy. America, I'm pissed off with America. Why has America turned on the late night jamboree? I understand why, like Chrissy, because she's such an entitled bitch, and Nini's a bit like that as well. But you got to think about Justin and Jason, and if you want to protect them, it's right. Like, do you want boring people at the end? Chrissy said that in the DRs, but fuck her. But if you want to protect Jason and Justin, you've got to keep the jamborias in place, whether it be Chrissy or Nini or whatever. You might think, oh, I like Shelby or Morgan or Alex or whoever, but surely you like Jason and Justin more. And if not, you're an idiot because they're the two best people in there. So you need to keep them safe. You need to keep their alliance intact. Um, I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on. I looked on Twitter and I still couldn't make head nor tail of it. Is it because... Jamboree is just getting too big for their boots. Fair enough, I agree with that, they are. But still, they're still better than, what are they, the ball smashers. So, I, it makes no sense to me. Um, oh, Chrissy had to put her feet up on Alex as part of this servant thing. Uh, she was a human Dr. Ottoman. That's a joke for the old bastards there. Um, <laughs> I said Alex took it well. Uh, being a footstool for Chrissy, because imagine if uh, it was Alex putting her feet up on Chrissy. I don't think she would like that very much, do you? I noticed at this point that Chrissy was wearing jelly snake print leggings. Now, I'm a fan of a bold print, but I've got to put that on the eek list. Sorry about that. Um, oh, God, the safety ceremony. Oh. Have you got two days of your life to waste? Me either. That's why I've not watched any live feed a week. No, I did watch a bit of live feed. Nothing interesting was happening, though. Oh, now I've noticed an unwelcome development in the house. Um, People saying, touche, all the time. Why, oh, why are you doing that? It's so annoying. Touche, ah, touche, America. Anyone who says touche is a known cunt. Just think of Tim, Comprende, whatever his name was, (laughs) Big Brother, (laughs) UK. It's just a cunt thing to say, touche, no. Stop it. That is not going to catch on, so stop doing it. It's not It's not the new friendship. It's awful, and it makes me cringe. Um, so Chrissy put Morgan and Scott up. Why Morgan? I actually like Morgan. In fact, I said in my last... Either in my last podcast, or I said something positive about Morgan on Twitter, and loads of people were like, mm, Morgan, uh, fuck off. I, I think Morgan's all right, so shut your face. Um, uh, Morgan is a lot more palatable than Alex, who's fucking annoying as fuck. I'll come on to more of that later. Why do people like Alex? This is another thing. I, I'm so, like, not uh, feeling the same way as America. Probably because I'm not America. I'm England. But, um, ugh, Alex is... Oh, she's so shrill. Uh-oh. Hi, Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hello. Um, okay, there goes the prof- any sort of veneer of professionalism. Oh, no, I forgot there wasn't any. <laughs> um, so then America got to nominate, and they nominated Neely. 
Now, I was so perplexed by this at the time, which is why I went on to do some further investigation, thanks, Twitter. But apparently it's because... Um, and just to put... I think it...